Welcome to Statistical Machine Learning. I'm James Sharpnack. This is Lecture 1. So uh, a little bit of this notebook is uh, from is adapted from uh, Aurelien Garon's GitHub page. Um, and this uh, you can find this notebook in the repository for this course. So the first step in learning is admitting you have a problem. And our problem is we don't really know what machine learning is. Right, so when I ask students what is machine learning, a lot of them will tell me examples of algorithms, right? And most of them fall within the classification context. So they'll say something like random forests or neural nets or boosting, and it heavily depends on the time period at which you ask them. So maybe a decade ago, they would have said boosting and support vector machines. Now they would have said neural nets. Maybe three decades ago, two decades ago, they would have said neural nets. Um, but this isn't really a fair characterization because machine learning, if you have been in the community for a long time, you know that it spans active learning, reinforcement learning, uh, unsupervised learning, and um, maybe many frequentist and Bayesian type um, settings, uh, variational inference, and so on. So it's really hard to put a box around machine learning. But if we were to do it, um, this is how I would do it. I would say that it's a computer program that learns from some experience with respect to a class of tasks and performance measures. And then the performance is assumed to, uh, uh, at these tasks, is assumed to improve uh, with respect to these performance measures as we get more and more experience. And so that's pretty much what a learning machine is. This is um, the definition from Tom Mitchell's book. So let's let's break these components down a little bit. Um, examples of these categories are uh, E, the experience, really is data, right? right? That's, that's anything that can be stored in memory that we will think of as data. And um, so, you know, typically we think of this as the training phase of our algorithm. The performance measure is very important because it's, um, it's very common in machine learning. And one of the defining characteristics of machine learning is to have some notion of loss. And then uh, when you evaluate your loss on a test set, that is your performance measure. And our goal is to minimize our average loss or some notion of loss um, on our test set right, when we're in the uh, batch setting. But this loss could also be replaced with a reward. So this is common in the bandit setting or the reinforcement learning setting is that we gain rewards. And typically we think of these as negative losses, right? So the rewards higher is better, losses lower is better. Um, but there's not a huge distinction between these, although in a lot of contexts we're going to be mixing supervised learning with the reinforcement learning setting and then loss and reward are actually going to be different in that context. Um, and so the task, this is really where the rubber meets the road for our purposes in this class. So we're going to be presented with different tasks and sometimes you have to tease it out of the um, the practitioner, the person you're trying to um, uh, help with their machine learning, right? So you're working with a, a, a someone in bioinformatics, or you're working with um, someone in an industry like the tech industry. Um, you're going to start asking them a series of questions, or you, maybe you're the expert yourself, and you're going to have a series of questions that you're interested in, and then you're going to try to convert that from broad questions about the domain to an actual task that we've characterized in machine learning in mathematical terms, right? So some of these common tasks are classification, regression, expert selection, um, in contextual bandits, these tasks are uh, basic bandit type, type problems and reinforcement learning is, you know, all of these are defining different tasks. Another common one is clustering. That's a common task. Right, and you would identify that this is the task I would want uh, that that I'm actually trying to accomplish. And then you start to enumerate things about the type of data that you have, maybe structural assumptions that you're going to place on uh, unknown parameters, and so on. And all of these things define how you're going to construct your learning machine. And our job as people in machine learning is to take um, these these different tasks and uh, data types 
and other computational constraints, communication constraints, and convert those into learning machines and program learning machines that can accomplish these tasks. Okay. So one thing that people typically are going to associate with um, machine learning is the prediction framework. And right off the bat, let's highlight the difference between inference and prediction. So in our, your common statistics classes, um, you are presented with certain questions typically, like, is this effect significant? Right? So you have maybe an, a series of X and, and a response variable, and uh, one of the uh, one of the x variables is of particular interest, its effect on the y variable, but then you have all of these other possible confounders. And um, the, the question that the scientist or whoever is asking you is, uh, can be broken down into something like, is this effect significant? Which you're going to interpret mathematically as its co coefficient in the linear model is zero or not. That's very common in your intro statistics classes. So that's a, that's a common statistical inference task, and we can turn it into either a hypothesis test or a parameter that we would like confidence interval around. Um, other other uh, statistical inferential questions are, you know, is this model correct? Um, so typically there, where we think of these as goodness of fit testing problems, and um, as uh, statisticians, you know, their day to day task is to turn some sort of a scientific question or other you know, question from other industries into a statistical uh, test or, or a, a confidence interval statement around a statistical parameter. But in, typically in machine learning, based on the previous um, definition of machine learning, we think of this more in the prediction context. So most, most of the time we're going to um, think more about prediction and less about statistical inference in, in this class, at least. So in the prediction context, we're just asking, does this algorithm, whatever the algorithm is, and we can treat it like a black box if we like, does it predict the response variable well? Right. Um, and so, for example, um, in prediction, typically we think of this in the supervised learning context. So this is a subfield of machine learning where we're predicting one variable or a, a set of variables from many other variables. And we think of that one variable, which is the Y variable, as a response variable, and it's supervising, in some sense, our learning task, right? It's making sure that we are on target to complete our task, because if we're doing a poor job of predicting the response variable, then we're not doing a very good job of learning, right? So that's why we say it's supervising. Uh, predictor variables are the X variables. So this is typically what we think of as our design matrix in uh, in the batch setting in in linear models. Um, and if we have N samples, then we have P variables in our uh, predictor variables for our design matrix. And we can just think of wrapping this up as a matrix that's N by P. Right? Uh, the Y, the response variable, if we have N samples, then it's just an n label vector. So each component of y it corresponds to a sample and a label, such as is this a dog or a cat? Um, is it raining or not? Um, what is the quality of our wine, in the wine as in the wine data set, um, and so on. And so I'd like us to, right off the bat, shift our thinking from statistical inference to the prediction context because that's a big difference between how we present statistical methods in this class, in machine learning classes, as opposed to your basic statistics classes. And that doesn't mean that prediction is a better framework to work in. In some ways, um, it's more restrictive because we're not able to answer um, questions like significance of effects without doing inference, right? Um, but in some sense, prediction uh, requires less uh, modeling assumptions and inference. So that's one reason why when you're in the prediction context, if you um, are, if your task is supervised learning, then you have this advantage uh, because you don't have to make um, significant statements in the end. Okay, so we're going to get started just by imported, importing some of our uh, common packages in, um, in Python. And throughout this class, we're going to be working in Python. So you better get used to it if you're not yourself. Um, so 
A couple of common packages are NumPy, that's your basic linear algebra package. It supports the array data type. Pandas supports the data frames data type. Um, and there's a significant difference between data frames and, um, and arrays. Um, but in, in terms of the sort of operations that they, they are optimized for and the other, their interface is, is quite a bit different. Um, we won't go too much into uh, uh, pandas versus NumPy and the details of these packages in this class look to, look to other um, classes on, on Python and data science for, for that. Um, some other things that we'll use, at least in this lecture, um, are stats models and matplotlib. Um, stats models uh, ha has a lot of the basic statistical methods that, that we use day to day as uh, in statistics. Matplotlib is your basic plotting package. And scikit-learn, um, we'll spend a lot of time in this class on scikit-learn, and we really will dig into um, the API for sci APIs and scikit-learn and how uh, scikit-learn is designed for us to do machine learning. And we'll devote a, a good amount of time to that. So I'm going to assume that you already know how to use NumPy and perhaps Pandas and, um, and Matplotlib, but not necessarily scikit-learn. And from scikit-learn, we'll import the linear regression um, uh, class from the linear uh, model module. Okay, so let's just uh, load up the wine, uh, the wine data set. It's a, it's a well-known data set. It contains, um, it contains observations where each of the X variables are various uh, chemical properties of, of wine that's been, um, that's been collected. So uh, quantities like free acidity, which is a number, volatile acidity, citric acid content, residual sugar content, chlorides, and so on. And then the last variable there is quality, and that's actually our response variable. That's what we would like to predict. Uh, most of these are numeric, all of these are numeric variables. Quality actually is a, an integer from five to, I think it is eight. Um, and it's 84,000 bytes. Um, the header, uh, if, if you look at this data set, um, we have to read it in, and we're going to actually write in a custom reading script. So this is a little bit of Python practice if you're, um, if you're not too familiar with this. So we're just going to extract the header here. We notice that the header is separated by quotations, and then the remainder is uh, everything, or sorry, the header and everything else is separated by the semicolons, and then there's quotations around the, around the uh, header titles. Um, and so, so these are a couple of things, and I'm just going to use Python space IO capabilities um, to, to import this. So if you want to dig into this, I would encourage you just as a refresher for Python. There's a couple of things that I just use constantly off, off the, you know, um, with the, off the tips of my fingers. So one of these is this, uh, list comprehension. If you aren't accustomed to list comprehensions, it's basically a map, a map, um, operation in Python and it's more readable than, than typical map operations. In this case, what we're doing is we're just going to read in the, um, the file line by line and then uh, strip it of you know, hanging uh, white space and then split it by the semicolon. Uh, and this will split it into a list of lists, right? The wine data set. Another thing about Python that you should already be accustomed to or you should um, go and, and look up and, and really understand is the idea of iteration iterators in Python. So, um, so iterators in Python, for example, the wine file is a data type that supports iteration. Um, and the way that this works is if you use it in a for loop, like we do in this list comprehension, then it's just going to go through the file line by line, making sure that each line is, um, is separated from the others by a new, a new line character, right? And that's the basic, um, idea of how you can iterate through a file in Python. So if you, so two big concepts that you should be accustomed to in Python are the idea of iteration and list comprehensions. So, you know, in Python, for example, anything that's iterable can be thrown into a for loop. And then with that for loop, you can write a list comprehension and that'll spit out a list um, of each element, the output of this, of this statement here. Um, 
uh, as each element of the list. So um, the we're going to convert this list and this list of lists into an array. So one way you can initialize arrays in NumPy is through list of lists. We're going to say that it's a D type has to be a float 64. And then we're going to also process the header. So you can look at this, this script. I use another list comprehension and I use split here. So if you don't know the split operation outputs a list and lists are iterable. And so they can be thrown into this for loop. They can be used in this for loop. And then um, we can extract the names, for example, of the different, of the different variables. So now we can convert these. We can look at the different uh, response and predictor variables. We have the X and the Y variables, and these are, are um, these will form two different arrays. And uh, now we have uh, we can extract the shape, and we have our N and our P is just the the number of rows and number of columns of the X uh, array. So we can just check this. We have something like 1,600 uh, samples and 11 predictor variables.